first lady, Sister Bay of God. Yes. But Jehoshaphat, let's read it together. But Jehoshaphat, is there not a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the kings gave to the servant and said, Here is Elijah, son of Shaphat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. Say that, the word of the Lord. Get up with me before we get to where we're going. All right? 
So they so they get in the bill, so they Jehoshaphat and, and, and Jehovah hook up, and they get ready to go to battle with Moab. And they get ready to leave, and they get ready to go, and Jehoshaphat makes an oath with him and said, um, I will go, I am as thou art, my people as thy people, and thy horses as thy horses. The same oath that he made with Ahab. So then they keep on going down, and then they get up to um, Edom, and they hook up with the, the king of Edom, and now they begin to go. And they get to verse 11. Let's go back to 10. And the king of Israel said, Alas, the Lord have called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. See, at this point, they have been traveling for about seven days. And there's no water. They're hungry. They're thirsty. They beat their horses are all thirsty. There's no nothing for them to go. And he said, the Lord our brother out here to kill us at the hands of Moab. They needed something. And our first part right here is found in verse 14. The verse of verse 11. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? Is there not a prophet of the Lord? They saw a man of God for a word. And one of the kings of Israel's servants asked him and said, Here's Elisha. <coughs> no. They had a problem. They needed a need. And whereas um, the king of Israel hollered out, We're about to die in the hands of Moab. Right. Jehoshaphat inquired, Is there not a prophet of the Lord? Right. It's something that when you're in a hard time, when you're in trying times, yeah, they could have sought for themselves, but they knew that if I can get to the man of God, he had a word that would help us. Yes, yes. That would get that was speaking to us. And, and see, we have to see, we have really, in, in, as a nation, and even as a community, lost the importance of the voice of the man of God. Yes. I oftentimes wonder. Who does the president consult with concerning spiritual matters in this country? Who does he consult with? We, we, we're, we're talking about kings in this sense. There are kings that are prepared to go to battle, and they have reached a problem that they have a need, and they're seeking a man of God for a word. When you look at the condition of another country, it's hard to believe they can fuck with any man of God. Right, right. I oftentimes ask, and I, I, I even ask the people that I, and they say, oh, who does the mayor consult concerning the spirits of the city of Mobile? Who does he consult? Because in order to be effective in, 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 in combating the, the crime that's happening there, you have to really know what spirit dominates Mobile. In order to really have put together a decisive and a divisive plan to really come back what's happening in the region, you have to know what spirit is dominating. Yeah. Well, you can go to certain cities and see see a different, different, different uh, 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 attack spiritually of a, of a crime or a spirit that's there. Because that's the spirit that has authority on that region. But then another question, man, well, who is on the wall for the city of Mobile? Who, who, who has the Lord appointed to be on the walls for the state of Alabama? What are the prophets and the men of men, women and women of God who are on the wall for this nation? Look at this text here. These three kings needed a word. And the Lord placed the instructions that they needed in a man of God. Amen. In a prophet. And it's amazing that while they're there and they appear to be having a hard time, the, the, the beast are hungry, the horse are hungry, they're hungry, everybody thirsty, that they say there has to be 
a man of God, of the Lord, that we can inquire of him. That we can inquire of him. I want to just put a pen down for a minute because I want to ask you a question. Do you take full advantage of the man of God who was put in your life? Elijah 
attention. You got to be righteous attention. And this way, you got to really talk to him. And he called for a minstrel. He called for a minstrel. A minstrel is simply a musician. Someone that plays. Usually a harp, saw tree, and that day and day, that's what they love. And when he begins to play, when the minstrel began to play, he takes it as the hand of the Lord and came upon him. Isn't that something? Yes, yeah, yeah. See, that one day we talked a few weeks ago about um, when Saul called for
live within the sweet sound that the Lord has for this house. And, and what I want you to do is, I, I want you to be, to be a willing participant in the worship experience. And once you become a willing participant in the worship experience, and sometimes that takes a lot of work for some people. Because we come in and we have so much on our mind. We have so much on our mind. Sometimes we have this, we, it's a struggle just to keep peace in our mind in worship. Yeah. 
follow. The at the entire atmosphere begins to shift. And those who are not seeing you begins to feel a move of God in the place. All because a few people have gotten on one accord and begin to open their mouth and begin to sing praises to an awesome God about how good he is, how great he is, how faithful he is. And because we all got on one accord and begin to sing about how good he is, he loved in his name being God. He decided to come and take a visit with us. And when he comes and visit with us, it is nothing that you need that he don't have. There is nothing that you need that he doesn't have access to. So we have to really be a willing participant in the worship experience. Because I'm telling you, whether you realize it or not, the heavens are open. The heavens are open. And it's like it's like being at a celebration. It's like being at a celebration. You know how it is on New Year. But when everybody's counting down, and, and when they count down, and when they say zero, something begins to fall from the sky. Balloons, glitter, something begins to fill the whole room. That's what's happening in the spirit ring. But when holding it up, your neck still closes. It has not been opening. The neck has been locked up over your head. Then you can see what I see. Yeah. If you can only see what I see, St. Joseph.
He'll make you look good when you know you ain't in good things. The Lord keep you and call you when you know that you ain't in good things. They saw one thing, but God has something else in mind. Amen. And I just encourage you, man, the woman of God today. If you stay on the wall, keep a praise in your belly. And walk obedient to what God has already said. Amen. Oh, you just like you, just like these three kings was. You'll get all you need. You get your prayers answered. Your question answered. And believe in your life will be fulfilled. God bless our Lord. Every need in their life. In the name of Jesus, so 
Lord God. Thank you, God, that the floodgates of heaven are opening our life, Lord God. And every need in our life is being met with heaven's best, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, don't open the floor to prosper. Every line and tongue shall be in the room, Lord God. God, we thank you for what you're doing in our lives, God. God, for how you're keeping us, God. Protecting us, God. Shielding us, Lord God. Ordering our steps, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And no one but you, God. No one but you, Lord God. We thank you today, God. For all the heavens in our lives. Now, God. We get to meet. And we know that, God. The heavens are open, Lord. Let me do God. We get to tell him that. We get to talk to God now. We get to open up and talk to God now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're here today, you're not safe. You are not safe. We have not been to you, the Lord and the Savior. Come today. Come right where you are. Just come on down right now. Wherever you are, you're not saved. Come down right now. Wherever you are, come down. You're here today. And you backslid. You backslid. You got backslid. You know you backslid. If that's you, then come on now. He didn't get saved. He loves you. He, he forgives you. And he, he wants you to come back. Come back. Come back. And then you come today. You're here today and you say to love God. Give me a church home. You don't have a church home. You don't have a church home. It's a great place to come. A great place to be. A great place to be. A great place to be. You're here today. And you just need some prayer. Come on down now. Come on down now. We're going to offer you one to offer prayer right now. Come on down. We're going to offer prayer. Come on down. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Lord God, that your will is done in the name of Jesus. 